about Supervisor Dave Cortese. And um, the, the ground rules here are that you'll each get one minute to do an opening statement. After that, we'll jump straight into <laughs> questions. And you'll each get one minute. Uh, go ahead and look over here to um, Fernanda Jimenez. She'll be giving you a 30 second warning as well as a stop time. And when you see that stop sign, uh, stop as quickly as possible so that we can move on to the next. Uh, let's go ahead and start here with Magdalena. Sure. We'll start with you sure. for your opening statement. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you so much for, for uh, having us all here. It's, uh, I, I have to say, it's been one of my greatest honors to serve the city of San Jose as a council member. But I've also been a social worker way before I ever uh, jumped into politics. I was uh, doing social work, working with families in crisis. Uh, for for about 25 years. And so I feel that I'm the most uh, equipped to tackle on a very, very complicated position, a very difficult uh, seat in the in Santa Clara County. And, uh, and, and we'll be facing a lot of very complicated issues, issues still on, crisis, on uh, the housing crisis, the environment, mental health, and of course, public uh, safety. These are issues that I've made it a point to be part of my priority during the last five years that I've served the city of San Jose, and it would be a great honor to be able to serve the entire county. Great. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, San Jose Spotlight and Creative TV for having us here. My name is Kenson Chu. I'm running for county supervisor because I want to bring my 20 years uh, public services experience uh, back home <coughs> so it can be more impactful. I serve at uh, a county uh, uh, commission on mental health, and I was uh, elected to various uh, school board and served on the San Jose City Council for eight years, and, and also served in the state assembly for, for before uh, six years. And county services is really an extension of the uh, state human services uh, the area. And I was very honored to be able to serve as the chair of the uh, State Assembly Human Services uh, uh, Committee. So it is a, a great honor to be back home. Hi, I'm Otto Lee. I'm a father of three girls, immigrant, intellectual property attorney, and a 28-year Navy veteran. I served eight years on Sunbelt City Council, including a term as a Green Mayor in one of America's 10 safest cities. I've served in Iraq to help bring our troops home and was awarded the Bronze Star. I've dedicated my life to serve the public to improve our community. Now I'm running for supervisor to solve these problems, rising homelessness, the ridiculous housing costs, traffic jams, and unsafe neighborhoods. We need affordable housing for our seniors, our teachers and students, and our at-risk families. I will fight to increase mental health services so people living on the streets can get what they have desperately needed. And I will lead efforts to reduce traffic and air pollution, improve public transit, include Caltrans and VTA. This is not just another political drop, and it's personal to me because these are serious challenges that will affect our kids' future. So by working together, we can fix them and we will. Again, this is obviously I'm honored to be speaking with you today. Thank you. Our county's biggest problems, homelessness, the mentally ill, drug abuse, are county responsibilities. I'm John Leba, and I'm running for county supervisor because I want to apply my 20 years of community advocacy from education to parks to land use planning, some time on the San Jose Planning Commission, as well as 15 years in finance and business operations to solve these problems. Our county government has gone from spending $4.9 billion a year to $8.1 billion a year in just the last five years. We have the resources to solve the problems that are in front of us. I look forward to tackling the challenges that our community has. So that's why I'm running for supervisor. Thank you. Great. We're going to jump straight into the questions. And um, Kanson, I'm going to start with you for this one. Um, this one is about RENA goals. So cities across the Bay Area. I'm sorry. 
Rena, the state housing goals. Oh, okay. Um, so cities across the Bay Area are bracing for the new state mandated housing goals, which are expected to be significantly higher than the goals that we have today. So what role, if any, uh, can or should the county <clears throat> play in helping cities to meet their goals, or should cities be punished for not meeting those goals? Yes, uh, definitely. The Rena goal is always uh, 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 been there. There's uh, some city uh, trying hard to really uh, get that number. And uh, uh, last year in the state legislature, we do propose some carrot and the stick. And we're suing uh, for the city for not meeting the RENA goal. And we're uh, providing some funding to the cities that actually uh, come close to meet the RENA goal. It, it is a goal, I think, is more importantly that uh, our county or region should have a long-term comprehensive plan to address this issue and how to achieve this goal. Yes, um, the state uh, RENA goals are something I believe is very important in order to make sure that uh, the housing crisis will hopefully be tackled one day. Uh, our, as I said earlier, our housing crisis is no longer high. It's just ridiculous and the shortage of housing in the Bay Area especially has gone through the roof. And I really do believe that the county has a huge role to play because after all, there are 15 cities in the Santa Clara County of which we have certain cities that are not meeting the goals and not building the housing needed uh, to do the job balance. And I really do believe that the county has a huge role to play uh, because we, it's not about only one type of housing. We need to build housing in transportation corridor. We need higher density in downtown area, but we also need housing for temporary housing needs that we need for so many people. There's too many people living on the streets and there are people sleeping in the cars. Those sleeping in the cars and RVs, those are still homeless. They are still unhoused. And we need to meet those goals by solving all of them. Thank you. If my understanding is correct, the RENA stands for the Regional Housing Needs Allocation. Right. Is that, that's the one you're talking about? OK. So basically, the process there is the state is setting targets for all the cities. And some cities meet those benchmarks, and some don't. Um, if memory serves, two of our cities in District 3, uh, Sunnyvale and Milpitas, are actually meeting or close to meeting their RENA goals. That's in sharp contrast to most of the cities across the West Valley um, in Santa Clara County. Our county itself is actually one of the largest landowners in the county. So I'd like to see the county make available parcels of land. And as you know, land is a, a key component and a total cost stack for any, any development. The county could make some of its surplus parcels of land available in those cities that are failing to meet their goals. And that would reduce the cost of housing. We could do more affordable housing in the West Valley cities. Uh, most of Measure A dollars, well over half, is going to San Jose. Other cities need to build affordable housing, too. Uh, thank you. Well, uh, the RENA goals, of course, uh, set off lofty goals for, for each city across the state. Um, and, and let me just say this. Uh, the housing crisis is one of the biggest crises that we've seen in our lifetime. And it didn't start just yesterday. It started decades ago. Uh, unfortunately, now is when we're seeing, um, we're seeing the real impact of having underbuilt, uh, produced many jobs in Silicon Valley, but underbuilt housing units. And so now we find ourselves in a predicament that is costing people their lives. The county, it, it's been said here, is one of the biggest landowners, and we have an ability with Measure A and any other tax measure that's gonna come uh, to support housing to be able to produce more housing. We have to be able to deal with the crisis at all levels. It's not just those who are living on the streets or living in RVs, but it's social workers, it's teachers, it's individuals who are having to flee the area because it's one of the most expensive areas in, in the nation. Great, um, so for this one, Otto, I'll start with you. And uh, this is regarding mental health because these services fall under the county's, a lot of these services call, fall under the county's purview. But some city, city officials say resources seem to be significantly lacking to address the need. And so do you support <laughs> Laura's law, which would compel certain individuals to get treatment? And what else should the county do to address the shortage in resources? 
Yes, uh, Laura's law is a measure that actually has been adopted by many, even of our neighboring counties, including San Francisco, Alameda, and San Mateo counties, uh, which is a way to help provide outpatient mental health services to those who really need it. Right now, the services are based on voluntary basis, and there are those individuals who honestly, they really need more help, and voluntary is not working. And that's what we're seeing a lot of the homelessness uh, cycle that we see, homelessness to public safety, to jail, and then they get released again. I, I really do think that Laura's Law is something that Santa Clara County should seriously consider adopting because we really need to actively provide these type of mental health services. If we recall back in the 70s when Governor Reagan uh, take out funding to our mental health institutions, folks are being up in the streets and county suddenly have this responsibility. And that problem is just exacerbated with the housing prices we have. So I really do think that this is something that we should seriously consider like our neighboring counties to provide the real help to our folks on the streets. Thank you. Last month, the county supervisors did a referral to staff to bring back a proposal on Laura's Law. My understanding is it's coming up on a county supervisor agenda next week or the following. The supervisors need to implement Laura's Law in Santa Clara County, period, full stop. The counties like San Francisco and Los Angeles that implemented it with the assisted outpatient therapy that Laura's Law provides for those patients, and it's not all of them, but for the ones that could utilize those services saw like an 80% reduction in the total cost of providing care to those folks. The county spends, or is planning to spend like $557 million for its behavioral health, um, behavioral services department in, in the coming budget cycle. I'm not sure if that's the right amount of money. I would like to see us uh, really focus resources on mental health care, improving crisis care, making sure that people can get the help they need when they need it. Um, but I'd like to see a top-down performance review all through that department to, to really measure effectiveness and make sure we're getting top value there. Great. Thank you. Um, well. Uh, as, a, as a, a representative that has a team that works very closely with our houseless population, I'll tell you that I, I, I understand the frustration that neighbors and residents are starting to experience because uh, of what they perceive as an encroachment into their neighborhood. You have blight, you have uh, you know, um, litter, and, and our homeless uh, or our houseless population uh, is in a very, very difficult situation. They have nowhere to go, so let's start off by saying that. Secondly, many of them either suffer from mental health issues and or drug addiction or alcohol addiction. Laura's Law, I think, came out of this frustrated conversation, but we have 5150 and we have a conservatorship, and we need to be able to figure out whether or not we're exploring and utilizing that to the best of our ability. If you take folks in, where are you putting them? We don't have enough beds. We don't have enough inpatient uh, services. So I would start first with creating a pipeline to make sure that we have the clinicians and the resources available before really looking at implementing Laura's Law. Okay. Yeah, I support uh, Laura's Law because it only affects a small percentage of the mental uh, health uh, consumers. It only affects those who was previously incarcerated or hospitalized. So uh, the, the, the challenge for the county is to be able to provide services. You know, to, to, to like uh, um, Council Member Carrasco mentioned, do we have enough bed? Do we have the services uh, when they uh, 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 force uh, the treatment? So that's a challenge. We need to make sure that we have uh, adequate funding to implement uh, Laura's Law. Great. Uh, John, I'd like to start with you on this one. And um, voters in 2016 overwhelmingly said yes to Measure A, which is a $950 million affordable housing bond aimed at building or preserving 4,800 homes in the region. As of June 30th, about $271 million of the bond has been committed. So um, I'm wondering, how would you make the most of the remaining funding? And would you support another bond measure or or tax for affordable housing in the meantime? Yeah, it's a great question. So of Measure A, um, about 700 of the $950 million are going to um, permanent supportive housing, about 4,800 units. And at this point, they're about halfway through the unit production on that. Uh, the, the county's actually doing 
a very nice job. I think there's some, some metrics and some info sheets that are available online. Um, the supervisors have shared those out that, that show that they are uh, delivering on units and they're on track right now. I want to see the county stay on track. My big concern is that a lot of the units are in San Jose. I don't believe we're spreading them all throughout the county um, to make sure that the entire county um, sort of shares the burden. Uh, and that people have opportunities to live, live in every community in the county. I would not support an additional tax measure for affordable housing until we spend through the Measure A dollars. There's several hundred million dollars on the table that are not committed. Let's finish that job first before we take on another commitment. Thank you. Um, that money is going to be spent very quickly. And, uh, and we will not have made a dent in uh, providing housing for, for those who are the most vulnerable and at most risk. Uh, so I'll, I'll say I supported Measure A. Uh, and if there, were a, there was another measure that uh, we could hold folks or, or jurisdictions accountable for, I would support it as well. Because we know that we can build in the next 10 years and we're still going to have a huge need for housing. Again, addressing the middle income, uh, the folks who are now having to flee the area, we need to make sure that they stay here and provide the services and products that we've come to depend on, that a healthy economy depends on. But we also have to make sure that those who are suffering from domestic violence, foster care, sexual assault, uh, human trafficking, are going to have somewhere where they can go and escape their perpetrators. I, I'd like to see a comprehensive uh, uh, plan to address the homelessness issue, because there are so many different reasons for people to become homelessness. Um, we were talking about production, we're talking about prevention, we're talking about preservation. So we need to have a, maybe a computer model and find out uh, how much money that we should be spending on production, how much money we should be spending on prevention and how much money we should be spending on preservation. You know, when I was on the San Jose City Council, I have a North San Jose neighborhood plan, which I got uh, all the stakeholders, the, the, the developer, the residents, the, the labor, the bicycle coalition people, and we come up with a plan and that it becomes part of the 2030 San Jose general plan, which called for 28 thousand unit of housing and and, and, and so so we need, we need to have a comprehensive plan before we keep throwing money at this problem Great. yes the 950 million dollars I believe will be all spent uh, and the, the issue I see with affordable housing these days is the time it takes to build them is far too long the pipeline at this point sometimes is two to four years and you know, as I tell people, uh, building housing is not rocket science. We can do it a lot quicker. I think we need to take away a lot of the red tapes. Uh, one of the issues I also want to see is the prevention of people getting homelessness. Uh, because once people become homeless, it's so much harder to get out of the problems. And I think this is why we need to make sure that the type of funding we're using is also working on people to make sure that they are going to be able to make that one, maybe one month, uh, of uh, uh, rent so that they keep them housed before they have to move, especially for families. Uh, another area I would talk about is I, I used to uh, live in Iraq for a year in a 40-foot container uh, uh, as a military housing. And, and these are some of the, the urgent uh, measure that could be implemented probably quickly, whether it's tiny homes, whether it's container housing, that we need to look into getting people away from the tents on the underpass and Creekside uh, to, to actual hot shell housing. Thank you. Uh, Magdalena, I'll, I'll send this one to you. So eight of the world's 10 largest tech companies are either headquarters, headquartered or have major offices in Santa Clara County, and many residents blame them for an increase in traffic and housing costs. So I'm curious, how can the county ensure that tech companies are doing their part to address the impacts of their growth? Uh, and I can understand that. Again, uh, it, Silicon Valley uh, had a boom which produced over 700,000 jobs. And, uh, and we only built a little bit over 100,000 units during that same period of time. So we have mega commuters who are coming in from Central Valley, who are coming in from the Bay Area. 
into Silicon Valley, and, and this is one of the reasons why we're sitting in freeways. It's a parking lot. And so I understand the frustration. Again, the housing crisis didn't start overnight. It didn't happen just yesterday. It's been going on for the last 20 years, and it's been building up. And just now, we're starting to really see the impacts, especially in big cities like San Jose, where we see a lot of our houseless population. But a lot of the folks who are being displaced and entire communities, such as my district, that are being completely gentrified. And so it's it's easy to blame the, the bad big wolf, and, and I do think that they have some role in this, but I think the role that they have is in helping us build more, contributing to those who are building, and making sure that they are hiring from within the community. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, I was talking about the North San Jose Neighborhood Plan, 28,000 residential units, and also 32 million square feet of uh, commercial industrial building. Because uh, in the 60s, the, the leadership in San Jose encouraged more of the, the residential build, uh, housing. So when I was on the San Jose City Council, we are uh, experiencing some worse uh, economic downturn because you, we used to rely on the property tax. Now, because uh, we, we move, push a lot of uh, companies uh, north uh, to San Jose, uh, so we're more, more, more and more rely on the sales tax. So I think having those uh, big companies coming down to San Jose will definitely <coughs> help the, the, the local uh, tax base, but there is some gentrification problems that we need to be addressed. I think they should definitely be a good corporate citizen to contribute money to the uh, housing issue and also uh, addressing some traffic impact issue. Mm -hmm. I don't. Yeah, we know that Google has pledged uh, a billion and Apple has then followed suit with $2 billion. Uh, these are exciting news headlines, but what we need to make sure is that they really put the money where the mouth is. Uh, I do believe our uh, county government and city governments need to partner with them uh, when it's really a matter of planning. Having served you know, five years in planning commission, we know these things are coming. We know the jobs are coming from Google. Uh, what are we going to do, right? I have no, nothing wrong about building nicer uh, housing in our, our towns. The problem is the dislocation of our neighborhoods. People have been living there are uh, being dislocated because they can no longer afford it. That's a real problem. And I think it's important to make sure that when you increase these jobs here, we, we welcome these good paying jobs, but we cannot hurt our local residents uh, in, in, uh, in that type of efforts. And I really do believe that it's not just a city by city problem, it really is a regional problem. Uh, and I think that's where the county has such an important role to play. And the supervisors really work very close together like they did with Stanford to make sure they do the right things. And this is what we need to work hard on. Repeat the question. Yeah, definitely. So um, I, basically this is a, at a time when many residents blame big tech uh, in Santa Clara County for an increase in traffic and housing costs, how does the county ensure that tech companies are coming to their to the table and doing their part to address the impacts of their growth? Sure, okay. So the first thing I think we all need to recognize is that planning and land use by state law is primarily a city function. So the county can serve in sort of a thought leadership role and just as the discussion of the RENA goals earlier, uh, really push on the cities to um, you know, maybe make some land available or other incentives to do more housing development in those cities and, and, and foster private public partnerships with the companies as far as if they want to you know, commit dollars or even just make sure that if they want to do mixed use facilities um, that, 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 that there's a template for that. So I think the county can kind of provide some thought leadership there but it's ultimately up to all the cities to allow them to provide housing, allow them to build the residential side along with their growth. I mean, there's two, two cities in our county, Santa Clara um, and Palo Alto have a disproportionate job space to residential. And so we really need cities like that to, to turn that around. Great. So I think that we'll move on to our last question of the night. Um, and 
this one is around transportation. So transportation officials, um, oh, and I'm sorry, we'll start with you, Kim. <laughs> so uh, transportation officials last month announced another delay with opening the BART stations in Berryessa and Milpitas. Meanwhile, ridership with the VTA is down. So if you were appointed to the VTA board, let's say as, as a supervisor, how would you balance the needs of both agencies to ensure bus services are preserved while paving the way for BART? Thank you. Yeah, the, the delay of the two, two stations impact my community significantly. You know, I represent various uh, and uh, Milpitas. Yeah, we're very disappointed with the delay. Uh, I think the, uh, uh, there's a recent grand jury report on the VTA, so I would uh, uh, definitely make sure that the, the VTA board uh, will follow this grand jury recommendation uh, and make the, the re regain some um, accreditability of that uh, organization. And uh, also on the bus services, I think we should definitely have a more extensive outreach to the communities and let the community uh, waiting on which bus route and what, how the bus should, should go around the city. And I will also suggest that, that the BTA use some smaller, cleaner bus, so you can sell the big 50-footer uh, uh, to go around the city. Okay. Adam? To me, the delay of the BART problem here is basically uh, <coughs> unconscionable. They said this is a software problem. We're in the heart of the Silicon Valley. We can't fix some software problem. Uh, I think it's more of a contract management issue. Uh, and if there were penalty clauses put into the contract, I think these things will be done quicker. Uh, but you know, right now, I don't think that's being enforced. Uh, VTA uh, ridership is getting worse. And they are talking about cutting uh, VTA lines. And to me, I think that's unconscionable as well. Because uh, the cost of uh, ridership, I think, is too high. 225 for ride, round trip 450. Uh, if it takes so long to get, get to uh, uh, a VTA bus and you know, ride in, you, you see, uh, except for commute times, right? Sometimes there are only four people in the train or on the 22 uh, double uh, 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 bus. Uh, we really need to focus on filling the buses and our trains. That's what we need, not filling the fare box recovery. Uh, until we can get that working, our public transit system is going down. So. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what I would not do. Earlier this year, um, VTA voted to cut certain lines like the 65 that was kind of a critical line going by an, uh, an affordable senior complex that's in the process of being built. Now those seniors won't have a good way um, to get to the doctor. Um, the VTA board uh, voted to spend $450 million to extend light rail to Eastridge, which will result in 2,000 people taking light rail a couple miles when the buses right now are doing it more cost effectively on a uh, dollar per rider basis. I would like to see us focus on the buses, which are the real backbone of the system, and potentially reduce light rail service and switch back to the buses that worked and got people around. We could very easily give buses priority at signals, like the BRT line is done um, with the 522 running down Allen Rock. I've ridden the bus before. I used to ride it from Allen Rock to Palo Alto um, a few years back. And so I, I think that's really the way we need to focus on our dollars. Right. Last Thank one. you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so I sit on the VTA board. And let, mm -hmm. me, just say, let me just say the following. Uh, a couple of things. California was not built for mass transportation. And so we're having to go back and change the culture of individuals who refuse to get out of their cars. That's one. This is not like Paris where the buses are running or, or the trains or the buses uh, are running every uh, two to six minutes. I was there several years ago and I was amazed at, at uh, the efficiency. It's easier, faster to get on a train, even if you have your entire family with you, than to even think about driving a car. And that's going to have to be the change in mentality and culture that has to happen first before we start filling all of the buses and trains. And that's gonna take time. But we need to build it so that we can have people use it and have alternate uh, modes of transportation. Because one of the most frustrating things is, again, to sit in a parking lot, and, uh, it, which was meant to uh, get us from one place to the other. Yeah, great. 
that's all the time that we have today. Thank you all for coming. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I just have a rebuttal regarding to the uh, light rail to Eastridge. Oh, Do I have uh, time? Uh, unfortunately, we are um, we are completely <laughs> out of time. I'm so sorry for that. But I want to thank you all for coming, and I want to thank everybody for viewing in, and um, we're looking forward to this upcoming election. Thank you. Thank, right. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.